Who is it? It is... Catherine Dye. I'm Anna Patosian. I'm Courtney Darcy. And I'm Claudia Rodriguez. And today we're going to be talking to you about Coca-Cola Bottling Company Consolidated. Before we get started, do you guys know the difference between Coke and the bottling company? What? There's a difference? Yeah. So Coke produces the syrup for the bottling company. So they only give them the syrup and Coca-Cola Bottling Consolidated puts it in their bottles and they add any other ingredients like any other flavors to them. Very interesting. Yeah. I didn't know there was a difference. Yeah. Well, now you do. <laughs> All right. All right. Cool. Wow. I'm going to jump into some history then. So, started in 1902, J.B. Harrison began selling bottles in Greensboro, North Carolina. After launching North Carolina Bottling Company, two decades of rapid growth followed. So, you know, there was a bunch of them. The unique contour of the bottles made its appearance in 1916. In 1931, they used Santa Claus on their bottles, and in 2010, they became the nation's largest independent Coca-Cola bottler. That's uh, awesome. So, we're going to introduce you the original Coke. They also bottle Diet Coke, Coca-Cola Zero, Fanta, Fanta. Oh, awesome. <coughs> so, get a little bit of variety. And there's Sprite. That's my and favorite. I love Sprite. Too. Not only with Coke, but they also have different products like Vitamin Water, Fuse, Pirate, Bigger. Exactly. All right. So for the modified building blocks, they are currently using quality with innovation. For example, they continuously go into stores and make sure their products are facing forward. So they go into an individual store and they have people that just face them to the front. Um, this gets the customer's attention more. They're passionate about their company and customers. They make deals with contracts with stores such as Walmart to keep their products in those stores. They always want their products available to each and every customer. So, they also have a 48 hour delivery time this is the most effective for them. They also ensure that everything is how it needs to be, and by not rushing, they can meet those needs and fix any problems. They also try not to say no to anyone. That's pretty awesome, if you ask me. Their number one goal is to build relationships with all of their customers, and through new technology, they can forecast better for product distribution. So, we looked at their SWOT analysis for the value chain. What is SWOT? SWOT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Okay, cool. So, they have a couple strengths. So, they have supporting activities, which is within their new technology, and that helps them better their primary material to material management. So, they use this technology that they have to forecast materials that they're going to need in the future. So they don't overproduce or underproduce, and they're able to keep their customers and their buyers happy. They also use their research and development with their information systems that helps them gain high profitability revenue in marketing and sales, just for the bottom line. Awesome. Well, unfortunately, they do have some weaknesses. What? Coke? Yeah. Coke? Oh. Oh. Bottling company? Bottling company. Consolidated? So what are those weaknesses? All right, so they are running a business with little support. They're growing at a rate in which they lack manpower. They are making mistakes because they don't have a middleman for communications for all their departments. By this, I mean HR, logistics, management, just everyone is not communicating well with each other. They are caused by the company's infrastructure, which affects operations and internal services. They do have opportunities though. With social factors, they're all about their customers and doing what's right, and they give back to the community, and this affects their buyers and suppliers. Technological factors, the potential improvements on technology would give them the opportunity to gain a competitive advantage through their distribution, which they make their buyers happy. Global factors, they can expand internationally, which would increase their buyers and suppliers. 
We're not in national? Not yet. They're trying to, though. That would be a good idea. Wouldn't be a good idea. So, they do have some threats. Dun dun! Dun dun dun! <laughs> the first one being substitutes for healthier beverages. Oh, these. Not these guys. <laughs> and by attempting to purchase bottling rivals. Um, this could potentially cause a threat to their reputation and cause them not to meet their goals for the upcoming years. So we also have some concerns. The first concern, and the main concern, is that they're growing so fast. So fast that they're falling behind in communication. So there's no middleman. This is pretty much shown with their attempt to sell in new areas. So they can turn us over here. Over here. But when they do that, they have a shortage on what is actually delivered to their consumers. This is because of poor forecasting. So that's why they get the new technology. Our second main concern right now is losing money from trying to have a presence in too many stores as possible. So we're over there, and we're over there, and we're over there, but do we really know what's going on? I mean, you can really see this whenever they try to attempt to buy other bottling companies. So, growing so, so fast, but we do have a couple of recommendations. There are qualified people who want to work there by the use of, and you can find them through staffing agencies. Staffing agencies will provide a wide array of trained and licensed workers. Um, they can develop better training programs, and new hires need to meet with upper management, possibly at their department to discuss their positions with the company, how everything is going, any recommendations those specific employees might have. Communication is everything. It's a key. So a recommendation for selling in new areas, in order to forecast better, you should continue investing in new technologies to ensure the forecasting is accurate as possible. An example would be an investing technology into researching millennials, such as us, and this would increase towards your target market. Millennials constantly want something new and creative. What's something that you guys want to see? I want to see my name in Spanish on a cup bottle. I want to see my favorite song. Justin Bieber. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. New and creative things. And we're looking for a hedonic experience, and by catering to our group, sales would increase. Some more recommendations that we have is learning how to collaborate with each other. This would help improve and establish a greater presence within the company and for the customers. By having several project managers that report to that group, they can each have different goals for the group. They are also missing out on some very important opportunity costs by trying to have a presence in every store. When really they should focus more on larger areas and direct delivery routes to make up the difference. So, like I said before, right now they're trying to be in as many stores as possible, so they're pretty much everywhere. So, with that, they're also trying to own their other bottling companies. What we recommend that you should do is shift your focus from, instead of trying to purchase so many bottling companies, you just need to grow your company at a slower rate, and you invest into these, the ones that you already own, so that you can make them as effective and efficient as possible. Once you achieve the strategic goals, and strategies for these, then you can go on to increase purchasing and com competitors and other bottling companies. That's what we recommend for you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Is that the number one and the boss? Here's some brief history <laughs> for you. We're <laughs> here. <laughs> Their distribution, making their buyers happy. Global, no middleman. None. Such as the Coke bottles that have our names on it.